Hello, everyone, and welcome to my session. My name is Don. I'm DevOps Director for the mobile team at Sun Life. I oversee uh, software development and DevOps for, for our team. And I'm here today to talk to you about how my team was able to improve the, the efficiency of our testing and the delivery of our mobile apps through planning and collaboration. Okay, I'll be digging into what I mean by planning and collaboration in a few minutes, but uh, maybe to start, uh, start us off a little bit of background. So uh, here at Sun Life, uh, we started adopting Agile a few years ago, and today all of the development teams in the mobile team are fully Agile now. Now, although all of our teams are practicing Agile, we noticed that um, there were still ways of working within our teams that are still very waterfall-like. Uh, we realized that our developers and the testers, although they were part of the same team, uh, they were still very much working in isolation, right? Um, uh, they weren't really talking to each other, not really collaborating closely. And uh, that wasn't really optimal for uh, the efficiency and, and the quality of our delivery, right? So, and so we started to take a look at ways to really encourage our teams to collaborate, uh, collaborate more. And uh, one of the important changes that we introduced into our team was uh, the practice of uh, behavior-driven development, BDD. And if you're familiar with BDD, BDD really encourages collaborating, uh, having uh, everybody on the team, you know, getting a shared understanding of what they're supposed to be building, how they're supposed to be building it, and really working together to achieve um, efficiency in terms of delivery and uh, and quality, okay? So I'll be talking about how we really achieved this higher level of collaboration, how and how that enabled more efficient testing and also higher quality releases of our mobile apps, all right? So now just a quick overview of uh, what our mobile applications are that we that we support in our team. So we mainly have two mobile applications. The first one is my Sun Life app. Uh, this is our main application. This is our biggest application, actually. Uh, we have currently 1.4 million active users uh, that are using our, DAP, uh, our, our apps, and uh, both Android and iOS, obviously. And um, this app enables our clients to really uh, look at their insurance coverage. They can submit insurance claims as well, looking at their investments and so on. So that is our main app. We also have a second uh, mobile app that's uh, called the Lumino Health app. And that has been rolled out uh, uh, pretty recently as well. So both apps are fully native. Um, we have iOS uh, and Android native developers in our team, and we do use a very native uh, stack of tools for our development, okay? So these are our two apps. Now, our, the team that actually supports these apps is actually pretty large. We have actually uh, have a number of Agile teams. Uh, we, be, uh, we have seven Agile teams that are uh, developing features in different parts of the app, and um, uh, and it's pretty active, right? We have a lot of features being developed con uh, developed continuously, and we also have DevOps uh, specialists that help support the team, uh, making sure that our pipelines are running well, uh, making sure our builds are distributed uh, to our our testing team, and um, uh, also if our tests are running well. So we have DevOps specialists taking care of that. Now we so this is a fairly large team, right? And when you have this many teams continuously, uh, you know, pushing code into the same code base, there is always a risk of things breaking, right? Uh, so we want to make sure we maintain a high quality of our apps. So we obviously have a very strong testing strategy. Automation is obviously a big part of what we do. And I will be uh, giving you guys an overview of how we, um, how we approach automation in our team. Uh, but um, really, the, the focus for my um, for my presentation today is really around how we plan our testing, right? So uh, now we have developers and testers in all of our teams. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier in my session, uh, we uh, even though there, there are our developers and our testers are part of the same team, they really weren't uh, working cl closely together, 
right? The devs are kind of working on their side, they develop the code. And then when it's, they have something to re ready to test, they hand it over to our testers and the testers start doing their thing. They start doing their testing, uh, writing automation and so on. And also the developers do their automation on their side, right? So it's really more of a waterfall approach, even though we're in agile teams, it's really a handoff of code. So the developers hand off their code to the testers so they can do their testing, right? So what that what that brings a lot of times is um, we see a lot of duplication of effort, right? Uh, the developers do their the, the development, they do their own testing, and they write their, their the test automation as well. And then the testers really do the same thing. And a lot of times they actually retest the same steps that the developers did. They sometimes write the same tests that the developers did, and um, and you see a lot of duplication of effort, right? Which is not ideal. So when we started realizing that, we decided to really um, find ways to improve that, and we started an introduction of BDD. So like like I said earlier, behavior driven development into our teams, and uh, I won't go into what uh, into detail, but what BDD is, there's plenty of content online for you guys to um, to learn more about BDD. Uh, but what we really like about uh, behavior-driven development is the collaboration aspect, right? Working together, uh, gaining a shared understanding of the requirements, and um, really working together to um, to build whatever feature they're trying to develop, right? And really what that brings is when you have a good understanding of what you're supposed to build, you're gonna build it better, right? So that's uh, that's the goal. And re that's really one of the benefits from BDD. And now one thing that our team decided to take one step further is uh, we're actually asking the developers and the testers to not work together, not only work on the requirements part, but also get uh, get uh, put together a detailed test plan uh, uh, before they actually start the coding. Okay, so um, that's the extra step that we we kind of introduce into our team, and I'll be giving you guys a quick walkthrough of how we approach that. Okay, so what you guys can see on screen here is really. Uh, a typical BDD process, right? It starts on the left side with um, the stakeholders and the product owner getting together and discussing business needs. And once they have the business needs, like what features they want to develop, what new enhancements we want to, they want to bring to the software, the product owner meets with the developers and the testers. So the rest of the team, really, uh, usually the agile team, and they sit together and they collaborate on requirements. Okay, and now this meeting here, uh, or this get together here, is usually called in the BDD process the Three Amigos meeting, and the Three Amigos being really the representation from the business, the developers, and the testers. Okay, so so the Three Amigos get together, um, they they try to understand what the requirements all uh, requirements are. Sorry. And um, afterwards, what they, they try to, to, to put together is a, a list of requirements that are written, written as scenarios following the, um, uh, the given when then format, right? So uh, given these start conditions, when we carry out this action, then we expect this outcome. So that's really the format that they try to build with the scenarios. Um, and that really gives uh, everybody a common understanding of what they're trying to build, all the um, at the very um, high level, they're trying to capture the specifications from their perspective of the user. That's what they're trying to do with these scenarios, right? So they write these scenarios, um, and then they review them, they refine them, and then they agree, uh, they agree onto what they're trying to build. Okay, and that's the key part here. Now, what we introduced afterwards is um, oh, we want to build a test plan out of this, right? So usually what the teams do is um, after they've had their requirements put together in the, in the, in the, um, in the form of scenarios, um, they create a test plan from this, okay? So a test plan is really um, a detailed test cases, also ideally following the given when then format, but that's not uh, mandatory, but they want to put together a test plan that's really uh, system focused, okay? So usually BDD recommends when you're writing your scenarios that it's not system specific 
And that's okay. We try to follow that. But when we get to the test plan, we try to push the teams to really get more of a detailed view of what the requirements are from a testing perspective and what scenarios that our users will go through in the system. So if I push this button, something happens. Um, that's an example of, um, of a test, uh, test scenario or a test case, okay? So um, the developers and the testers really take the requirements away. They try to build the test plan using uh, the given when then format. And once they have a test plan together, uh, the developer goes onto his side or her side to um, use the scenarios and start writing the code and also the tests. And the tester does the same. Uh, he or she goes onto their side um, and they start uh, preparing uh, the test as well, okay? So now this is an example of uh, a test plan that we that were uh, some of our teams have put together. This is actually a simplified version, but uh, the essential is there, right? So you have basically the test case, you have the given when then um, statements in there. And what we added into the test plan is another step. Um, so this column here called the types of tests. Uh, the developer and the, the testers actually collaborate together and to see for this particular test case, how am I gonna test this? I'm gonna, am I gonna write unit tests, uh, API tests? Uh, we also write UI tests as well. So are we gonna cover this scenario with UI tests? Uh, manual testing as well, um, as well. So, so we don't, uh, we can't, we can't move away from manual testing. It's always going to be there, but we try to keep that to a minimal. But uh, to a minimum. But uh, the developers and the testers determine how they're going to be testing a particular test case. Okay, and that's really key because what that does is um, uh, it it removes some of the duplication effort because um, the developers know what they need to be tested. The testers know how things are going to be tested on the, from the developer standpoint, and so they don't need to uh, redo these same the same type of tests, and they can really focus on what they need to test on their side. Okay, so that's where the collaboration comes comes in uh, into play here. We're able to have a full picture of how we're going to test things. And really uh, building a test plan like this takes time, right? But it really definitely pays off later because like I said, there's no duplication of effort. The developer from a developer perspective, perspective has a better understanding how his code is gonna be tested and it's gonna help them build the code and also write his automation and same thing with the tester, okay? And so really this is a big advantage of taking the time to create a test plan um, including how you're going to uh, automate or do any type of manual testing for your uh, test cases. And um, that's going to help the developers and the testers really do their work and uh, preparing the code and uh, getting it ready for production, really. Okay. So the test plan is the key here with the type of test. That's one of the key components of, that we have in a test plan. All right. So the result of this, uh, this collaboration, is a very extensive testing coverage, okay? Uh, if you guys see here on the screen, we have, uh, like I mentioned earlier, multiple types of tests. Uh, starting with the unit tests, uh, the developers write their own unit tests, uh, um, obviously. Um, unit tests are really low level um, uh, test, uh, testing that they do at the code level, right? Um, we use the MVVM design pattern in our team to really make our tests uh, sorry, not our test, but our code testable, um, and where we can really um, isolate the business logic and really uh, unit test the business logic in our code. And uh, what we notice is from the collaboration that we did, that we read that we're, you know, encouraging teams to do through the BDD process is, we noticed that there was an increase in code coverage, in unit test code coverage, okay? Now, to be clear, we don't actually set goals in our teams in, code, in terms of code coverage. Um, really, our philosophy in our team is code coverage is more of a side effect than a goal. You really don't try to um, reach a goal in terms of percentage of code coverage. But what we did notice is um, an increase in code coverage overall because the, the testers and the developers are really uh, discussing the testing ahead of time. And the test, uh, the developer who's writing the code and writing the unit tests really really uh, uh, has an idea of how to test their code. And also that uh, really helps them build their unit tests, okay? So the unit test is a key part. 
We also have UI tests as well. Um, the UI tests, um, uh, we use native uh, tools to write our UI tests. So we use Espresso and Android, XCUI on iOS. And um, uh, we have actually have a really extensive test suite uh, of uh, UI tests, okay? We currently have over 350 developer written tests uh, that are UI tests only, okay? And they run, uh, they run daily. So we get uh, daily feedback from our UI tests. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about this is these UI tests are key because uh, they give us high confidence in how our apps behave. Our apps behave. Um, the UI tests are really a simulation of what our users are actually doing in our app, right? So um, when we have UI tests running, it gives us high confidence that our features are still running per, uh, uh, well. They're, they, we didn't introduce any uh, defects or any uh, issues in the in the usage of our features, and um, so so like I said, these tests are running daily, and also the developer also can pick and choose uh, while they're doing the development and pick and choose, and they can they can pick and choose which tests they they uh, they want to run to really validate if they 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 actually broke something in in some of the features that are already existing in our app. Okay, so UI test is a key component as well. Uh, next, we also have API tests. Uh, we have a middleware layer, which is kind of an API, REST API layer that connects us, uh, connects our mobile apps to our backend systems at Sun Life. And so that middleware layer, we maintain that. So, um, so that's code that we may have to maintain that and that we have to deploy as well. And the API tests that we write uh, allow us to uh, validate that code as well. So we call those, we can call those integration tests, okay? And these API tests, we use this tool called Rest Assured, which is uh, an open source tool that we really, uh, that we really like. Uh, it's really developer, developer friendly. And uh, we use that tool to uh, write our tests. And these types, uh, these types of tests actually run as quality gates in our deployment pipeline. So as we're deploying our code, promoting our code to our higher environments, these tests are being run before we can promote a code, okay? So API tests as well, that's a key component of our testing. And obviously we have manual testing as well. It's mainly exploratory testing. Um, the best part of this is with the collaboration that we have in place, uh, manual testing is really of a complement to our automation. Um, and, um, and really the other thing that we avoid from the collaboration is we avoid duplication of effort, right? Uh, we don't need to retest stuff that's already been automated. We don't need to retest manually stuff that the developer had may have already uh, tested manually and also have automated on his side. So all of this together uh, gives us a really uh, extensive coverage of our um, of our uh, of our testing, and it gives us co high confidence when we're ready uh, to release into production, right? And the other thing I want to mention here is all of these tests are um, uh, are needed. They uh, the, 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 you need a mix of all of these tests to really get confidence as you're deploying into production, right? Um, the one type of test cannot replace uh, one another. It's really that all these tests together complement each other. And that's what we want to approach our test, how we want to approach our testing in our team, okay? So the result of this, uh, the benefits are, are pretty great, okay? So not just um, uh, the type of tests that we write, but also uh, the collaboration brings a lot of benefits, right? The, one, the first thing is the cycle time uh, of when we're doing uh, our development has really, uh, we see it like a like an interesting uh, reduction in terms of cycle times. And for those who are not familiar with cycle time, cycle time basically means the time it takes for a team to um, uh, complete a task or usually a story, right? Um, and so we, uh, with the collaboration that we've um, we've encouraged our teams to to um, to to do uh, within our teams, we've seen a the reduction in our cycle time just because. There's no handover anymore. The developers and the tester know uh, know how they're going to be building their 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 feature. How testing is going to be done um, 
for a particular feature, for example. And a lot of times what we used to hear in the, in the past, and I'm sure other teams um, have heard this as well, is uh, testing becomes a bottleneck, right? Uh, especially when you're, you know, handing over code. So the testers are really in waiting mode and they're waiting for, for, for something to test. That's how testing becomes a bottleneck, right? So when you do collaboration, you kind of avoid that, right? The developers and the testers work together um, and then uh, there's really no handover anymore. So the bottleneck really disappears, okay? So cycle time, uh, improvement in cycle time is something we really notice as, uh, first of all, quality has also gone up. So defects leakage, defects leakage for me is um, late defects that we might find when we're doing regression, for example, or even uh, defects that we might find in in production. So defect leakage uh, in our um, in the mobile team at Sun Life has decreased 25% year over year, which is really good. Um, and that's a result of our testing strategy, um, uh, but also our collaboration to define a testing strategy before we actually start the coding, okay? Um, another benefit that we see time to market has also reduced. Um, uh, release preparation time. Um, we don't need to do a whole bunch of regression testing anymore um, uh, before we actually release our app. So that the time it takes for us to, to prepare for release has been reduced. Um, we can develop features, uh, get them ready a little bit faster. Okay, uh, so that also factors in into the reduction of uh, time to market that it takes for our, for our mobile applications, okay, um, in terms of features, okay. Um, and, and also production incidents, um, uh, any, any defects that we might find, any production issues that we might find, that's had also been reduced uh, significantly. Uh, this year as well as a result of our um, uh, new testing strategy and our testing practice, practice in terms of collaboration, okay? So as you guys can see, the benefits are really great. Um, and um, really, it really, it really comes from having a complete testing strategy, but also pushing our teams to really collaborate before they actually start the development. Okay, so I'll, I'll end here with my, tea, my key takeaways from uh, my session. Um, just to recap, uh, the first takeaway is to really be, to really have an effective stra testing strategy, you need a variety of types of tests, okay? Um, you can't really focus on a particular type of test, even though sometimes we have the developers that are Really, they really like unit tests, and that's totally understandable. Though, uh, understandable, right? Unit tests are fast; they're easy to write, they're easy to run. But you need other types of tests as well to to make sure that um, you test other parts of the app, um, uh, other um, layers of the app, and really um, uh, making sure you have a full um, full view of how your uh, application runs while you're doing your testing, right? So. Um, different types of tests are really required, uh, especially in the mobile world. Uh, you need different types of tests to really properly test your, your mobile app. Okay, so that's my first key takeaway. Second key takeaway is collaboration between developers and testers really speeds things up when it comes to delivery. Okay, and also you can also achieve better quality as a result because um, the developers and the testers work together to get the requirements, first of all, through the BDD process, right, the, with the business. Um, they take the time to understand what they're trying to build. And they take the time also uh, to elaborate the testing strategy before they actually do their development. So they don't, they don't work in isolation anymore. They work together. Um, um, they reach a common understanding of what they're trying to build and also what they're trying to test. And that helps speed things up in terms of our delivery, our cycle time and so on, okay? And finally, uh, investing time upfront to create a test plan really pays off. As I mentioned earlier, if you take the time to really prepare a testing plan, understanding what you'll be building and how you'll be testing it, it's gonna pay off later, right? You're gonna be able to develop faster. You're gonna be able to deliver faster. Your release preparation is faster as well. And also what you get in, uh, in terms of um, issues 
uh, in production uh, defects leakage or production issues, that's going to go down as well. So that really pays off as well. You, we all know that um, the later you find issues, the more expensive it gets to fix them, right? So investing the time up front to really um, collaborate, understanding how you're going to test things um, and um, putting a testing plan together really helps um, speed things up. And also um, uh, in terms of delivery, obviously, and also um, it, um, it reduces the issues that you're going to find later. Okay, so uh, uh, that was the, the end of my uh, my session. Hopefully, this was useful for you guys. I want to thank all of you guys to uh, for attending. Uh, um, if you guys have any questions or uh, you want you guys want to understand better how uh, we we implemented this in our team, or maybe we just discuss uh, th things in general on how we do things in the in the mobile team at Sun Life, you guys can definitely reach me at um, on LinkedIn. Um, just send me a message and uh, definitely we can uh, connect afterwards.